you know Cade Cunningham is the alpha dog. Right. Beyond that, everybody else thinks, I got a shot to be the number two dog. Uh, and plus, the Pistons are trying to become the next great thing, going to movies together, mm -hmm. throwing water balloons at each other. Just stuff, stuff like that bonds the team. These guys, these young Pistons, at, at this stage of their careers, are tighter than the bad boy Pistons. Now the other team that plays at LCA, talking about your Detroit Pistons. And Spence put this question out there. And I love you, Spence, but I think this is such an easy question to answer. But I want to go around the horn and see what everybody's take is on it. Who is going to be more vital for the Pistons to succeed this season? And he put two names down here. You can add your own name to this, but out of these two names, what do you think? Sadiq Bey or Isaiah Stewart? I'm going to take Sadiq Bey because we mentioned it yesterday and stuff like this, is that he sort of is the one that's going to get forgotten or not forgotten about, but a guy that with Bogdanovich out there is that if we can hide him and he can be as efficient, you know, last year he set the, the record for threes and stuff like this, he could be very, very, you know, lethal and, and used as that, you know, three-point weapon that he, that he should be. So uh, Isaiah Stewart is valuable, but I think Jalen Duran makes a bigger step uh, especially down low and will take away from those minutes. So I think Sadiq Bey, it's it's set up. They know what they have. They proved it last year that they're going to get on the ball to shoot. So I don't see why it uh, doesn't play out that way. And adding Bogdanovich, I think it will be an asset. Uh, you know, put more eyes on Bogdanovich and let maybe Bey get you know, the one-on-ones or be able to get open for those looks. Yeah, I'm 100% with you with Sadiq Bey. Uh, just for the spacing in general, and like you said, Isaiah Stewart kind of getting just pushed down the depth chart at the big man spot. And eventually, I don't even think he's going to start this year. Sadiq Bey will most likely be our starter at the three position. And that does a lot of things for the entire team. I mean, now we got a guy like Jaden Ivey who needs the space so he can use his quickness to get into the lane. He's going to be able to do that. Same thing with Cade Cunningham. He's not, more, he's not much of a slasher type player, but you're giving him more space so he can use his body and his long arms to get to where he needs to go. And then we talked about a little bit yesterday, Sadiq Bey and just his natural shoot ability the fact that you have to respect that dude in the corner of a Dwayne Casey offense that's that's a big deal because it opens up so many things for so many other players Terry what 80s, you think the 80s and 90s are not here anymore so if, if that was if we were still in the 80s and 90s it would be Isaiah Stewart uh, because he is a strong guy and he'll he'll kick your ass too but Sadiq <laughs> Bay is tailor-made for this new NBA you need three-point shooters um, the mid-range game is not as important as it used to be, so um, it's definitely him. My, que my question to you, Terry, and, and also to you, Stick, is just by listening to you break that down, Stick, is this lineup that we're going to feature, not even just the starting lineup, but, but the, the guys that we're looking off the bench, do they, are, it, they seem like they support, they're supporting each other, like the, what their, their assets are making each other, they'll make each other better. It's not just like five of the same guy out there or whatever like right. this. If he doesn't score, then it's not going to matter. But all these guys, as you're talking, is that the quickness of the ivy and the spacing will allow him to do this and him to do that. Do you, do you see it this way with the talent that they're putting, with the assets that each individual player has, that, this, that they're becoming more of a team that will make each other better? Well, yes, I do see that. The only problem with that is... You know Cade Cunningham is the alpha dog. Right. Beyond that, everybody else thinks, I got a shot to be the number two dog. So is it going to be conflict with, co with players? That's why I think Dwayne Casey and Cunningham are trying to make sure that we're all boys right now. So when the time comes where you think you should have a bigger role and they say no, that you don't go sulk in a corner. Uh, and plus the Pistons are trying to become the next great thing. I think the Pistons and the Cavaliers are positioning themselves that when Boston gets old, when Miami gets old, when Chicago starts to fade, they can be that next thing. So in my mind, the Pistons are competing with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And you brought up a good point, though, about how they're doing this as a team and how they're kind of bonding because these guys are going to concerts together. These guys right. are doing community events together. These guys are always together no matter where they are. Even when they're doing other things, they're sitting front row at other basketball games together. You can really see the continuity within this young core. But as you mentioned, Cade's the lead dog. 
who's going to be that second guy that steps up. Right. But I'm glad and they're doing it like a team. Got, and that's going to support K. Right. It can't be a, a, a number two guy that steps up and then is jealous of K. That, so they got to watch out. But, you know, when you're building a team, it's not just practice. It's not just film work. It is little things like going to movies together, mm -hmm. uh, playing, you know, throwing water balloons at each other. Just stuff, stuff like that bonds a team. Yeah, it's not only in sports, too. It's like, it, it, right. you know, at Woodward Sports, too. It, it's everything. Whenever you're having a good time and you have that camaraderie, Sam will do something that he normally wouldn't do, go above and beyond, because he knows I would do the same for him. And if you don't have that in a team, you're never going to win a damn thing. d -Mac, have you ever been a part of a winning <laughs> team that didn't get along? No. Yeah. No. No. And, 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 I mean, it doesn't, like... You'll, you'll have differences from guy, but the commonality is the team goal. And that's the whole thing. I think, Terry, does this, does the makeup of how they're putting this Pistons team together remind you at all of, of you know, cause I look at like Cade's different than Isaiah, but the key is the alpha, you know, of this group. Or is, is there something like that? Because you've mentioned before how, how Isaiah had Joe. Right, and right. but he also had Vinny, and the, the fact that Vinny was the three that it's, that thought he should play, played as hard as ever, was ready to play, so that when he had to make the free throw at point, he was always ready to play. Do you see the camaraderie? Because there is sort of some sort of conflict, but is there similarity in in what's being built there, or am I off? I I think these guys, these young Pistons, at the time. Uh, at, at this stage of their careers are tighter than the bad boy Pistons. Because the bad boy Pistons, they would go off on their own. Um, they weren't doing as many things together. And I think just the time was different. Right. And at the 80s, and I, I, although I love the 80s for basketball, they people just go off on their own. There was 12 different corporations. That's the way Chuck Daly used to describe it. Yep. I don't view... This Pistons team is 12 different corporations, even though they are, but they still hang out a little bit more, and they do things, and there's just more reasons to be bonded. Do you think that's because they're all in similar age brackets, too? You know, right. when you look back at the bad boy Pistons, you had some vets, you had some young guys, mm -hmm. you had people trying to be a part of the team. But this team is, a, like, everybody's 22 and under. Like, right. they're, all, they're all about the same age. I, I don't think they know any better. I think it's still cool for them to go to a restaurant downtown together. It's like a big thrill. Um, I don't think that was the case with the Bad Boy Pistons. Because first of all, they played in Auburn Hills. Right. And they did do things together, but not at this rate. Now, here's what I'd be curious about. Um, when the team plane lands uh, from a road trip, these guys back in the, in the 2004 Pistons, they were like, we're not going home. We're, it's still midnight at 12.30. We're going to go play pool together. Now, this current Pistons team, I'm, what do they do when the plane lands? Do they all go home and rest up, or are they still hanging out together? I think that plays a big role, too. Yeah, I, th I think you see that more on the road. Is 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 in in other towns? Is that's when guys you know hang out or, you know who's who's going to dinner together, who's going to a movie or who's hanging out on the road. At home, you got more responsibilities. But to your point, these guys are a lot younger, so they don't have the families and stuff yet. So are they still hanging out? Because it is. I forgot. You say twelve o'clock, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, that's know, when the party I, just starts. Only baby. bad stuff happens sticks, after midnight. Sticks like man, I just got out of the shower and got my. <sighs> You know, my, my lounge No, but a little, little, little pregame action before 12 o'clock, and then we head on out. You no, know? If, if I'm in a plane and it's landed at midnight, as soon as I get off that sucker, I'm going home. But the, the older Pistons, they're like, we're going out. We're still hanging out a little bit. Because maybe you had some conversation on the plane you didn't finish. Maybe you're feeling good about your pool game and you want to kick somebody's ass in pool. <laughs> so, that, I mean, they'll still, they would still hang out. When they came back from a road trip, and I'm wondering if these young guys are doing that too. They probably are, but I don't know that. Well, you see back. it on their social media. You know, they're in cars together, they're rapping together, they're having a good time. Rob Murphy, the VP now, you know, um, he, he used to 
be a part of the Motor City Cruise. I, I messaged him the other day like, man, seems like you guys are having a lot of fun with these guys. And he said, yeah, it, it's really fun to watch these guys, this young core, grow as like a little family, too. Now that's going to make things tougher down the road. If they get too close-knit, you got to start making trades and whatnot. But that's where the professional aspect of sports comes in. And you understand that at the end of the day, it is a business. Well, they all have agents. Yes. And those agents are telling them no matter how much you love it there, no, no matter how close you are with somebody, somebody's going to get traded. Somebody's going to get released. It's a business. That's the number one thing. So don't get too cozy because... But uh, still be boys. Right. <laughs> it's such still a be weird... Boys, but right. at some point, your boy is going to be your enemy or could be your enemy. It's so wild to think about. Like, imagine if that was everyday life too. Like, uh, you work, you know, right. you work at a gas station. It's like, sorry, you're traded from Speedway to Mobile down the street, and we got back like a vending machine for you. Right. Like, and the guys you work with now, you need to compete against. <laughs> it's just right. 